Today, let's take a look at the Rock Island Armory Ultra FSHC, model 1911A2. The model 1911A2 is a double stack high capacity variant of the original single stack model 1911A1. As a lifelong fan of the 1911, this A2 version from Rock Island Armory piqued my interest because of all the factory upgrades it offered. I'm also a 10mm fan. When I noticed this model was being offered in 10mm, it was simply a temptation overload. This Rock Ultra A2 is a 16 plus 1 round 1911 incorporating a 70 series firing system, which I happen to prefer over the 80 or 90 series. In my opinion, the triggers on the 70 series builds are always better right out of the box. The pistol uses a bushingless bull barrel design instead of having a conventional external barrel bushing. The barrel's finished off with a custom target style crown that'll do a great job of protecting the rifling at the end of the muzzle. Other features include a low profile fully adjustable rear sight combined with a fiber optic front sight. It also incorporates an ambi safety lowered and flared ejection port, skeletonized trigger with over-travel adjustment, combat-style hammer, and an upswept beaver tail grip safety. The grips are made of thin G10 material. That helps slim down the slightly wider A2-style grip frame. The texture feels just about right without being overly aggressive. It also came outfitted with a competition-style magwell. According to my trigger gauge, the trigger on this pistol breaks at a consistent 4 pounds. Very crisp break, and it feels really good right out of the box. The pistol comes with only one 16 round magazine, which did piss me off to no end. Seriously, you guys over in Pahrump need to start shipping these pistols with two magazines. The pair of ordnance P16BA2 magazines also fit this pistol. I ordered these online from Greg Coat Shooting Supplies. Seems like I paid around 21 bucks each. I'll leave a link below for those of you interested. I do reload for the 10mm. I also don't believe in shooting watered down 10mm rounds. What's the point of owning a 10mm if all you're going to shoot is neutered 40 Smith & Wesson class ammo? I load my 10mm rounds to the original Norma factory specifications. These loads produce roughly 700 foot-pounds of energy by pushing a 180 grain bullet at 1,350 feet per second. Ballistically, that's pretty darn close to the powerful 41 Remington Magnum. Fully loaded, this A2 holds a total of 17 rounds, capable of unloading approximately 11,900 foot-pounds of energy into a target. To me, that's pretty impressive firepower for a handgun. Recoil is a tad more noticeable than your average 1911 chambered for the 45 round, but that's to be expected. It's really not that much more recoil when you take into consideration that the 10mm strike in energy is far superior to the 357 Magnum. The niche I have for this high capacity 1911 is carrying it as a potent sidearm whenever I'm camping or fishing in bear country. Sometimes packing a rifle just isn't practical. Like most sane people, I go out of my way to avoid bears, but there's no 100% guarantee that a bear will always choose to avoid you. Most bear experts, usually the ones who haven't been mauled or eaten, recommend carrying pepper spray. Personally, I have no desire whatsoever to be reduced to bear crap that happens to smell like pepper spray. I feel a little better packing the 10 millimeter. I've taken deer another medium sized game with the 10mm round. It has plenty of strike and energy for hunting medium sized game, but I always limit my shots to under 100 yards. No matter how fast they're started, pistol bullets lose velocity faster than streamlined rifle bullets. Even the 10mm has its limitations. This Rock Ultra is also very accurate, having fully adjustable sights made sighting it in really easy. Something I really like is the fiber optic front sight. The older my eyes get, the more I'm starting to like fiber optic sights. This A2 is a reasonably priced, high capacity 10mm that comes factory equipped with a ton of upgrades. I also like the fact that this pistol rides just fine in any of my standard 1911 holsters. 
The MSRP for this model is listed at $826. I picked this one up for somewhat less than that. If you shop around, you can probably find one in the $650 to $700 price range. Well, that about wraps up this review. It's time for me to commit an act of arson on this dog rocket. So until next time, practice often, shoot straight, and thanks for stopping by.